Hi, welcome to Tonko Cast number 10. 10? Wow. Yes. This week? Month? Yeah, we had、um, Dennis and Masa from the company Niantic. So, Niantic is the company behind this amazing app,、uh, Pokemon Go. Yeah, and it was a, quite the phenomenon,、yeah. um, both in terms of games and phone apps, but cultural. It also、yeah. was a cultural thing.、Um, That's what's really interesting about what they were trying to do. It's not just ordinary games, they're trying to really change the lifestyle of people, and they explained that in the podcast. Yeah, so we're really excited to share our conversation with Dennis and Masa. Enjoy. The first question though, like, should we talk about like this very thing? You know, either Pokemon Go or maybe it's more like a location based app that you guys specialize in. Like, what is it's such an exciting thing, looks like to us, of course. You know, can we talk about that? What that is and the vision of your company and you know, how you guys started and all that. I know you guys started in Google. Yeah, so <laughs> I guess we'll start.、Um, the origin of the,、uh, the team around Niantic was、uh, really when John Hankey, the founder, he was、uh, leading all of、uh, Google's geo efforts, so Maps, Street View, Google Earth,、uh, a lot of those things.、Um, he was the founder of Keyhole, which Google acquired and it became Google Earth eventually. So he was really the kind of the visionary, the driving force behind、um, all that effort. And then, after you know, leading that for many years, leading a team of many hundreds of people, he kind of wanted to transition to、um, doing something more exciting,、uh, kind of more smaller and kind of more startup y. So the Google founders allowed him to basically do something very unique, which was to create what was called an autonomous unit. And there were only very few of those at the time. So, the self driving car was one of the initiatives around that. Google Fiber, I believe, was one,、uh, another example of、uh, a similar effort. So, John started Niantic. And at first,、uh, the, the idea was sort of fuzzy in that、um, he had this pet peeve around people being in like amazing nature or、mm-hmm. beachfront or whatever. And you always see the dad with the cell phone checking email, <laughs> right? And the kids are like, hey, dad, you're trying to get the dad's attention. And so he, he has three little children and the, the kind of an idea to hold on、uh, to. So it's like, how do we change that with you know, technology? Since the phones and a lot of these things are、uh, sort of a distracting element. Uh, how can we kind of turn that around and use that to engage people to their surroundings and in doing so、uh, make them care more about their surroundings, their local community, and、uh, just kind of move more instead of being sedentary or just always having your nose stuck in the、yeah. screen? So that was、uh, kind of the starting idea. So I joined、um, pretty early on. Maybe when the team was, I can't remember how big the team was. It was less than 10 people, I think. And I had just finished、uh, kind of managing the Google Webmaster team.、Uh, and I was a little bit burned out, to be honest.、Uh, you know, managing a large team is draining, as you guys, I'm sure, know.、Uh, so I was looking for something、uh, kind of a, a sort of a fresh start.、And、luckily, I got connected right at, at a really good time with John, and he was like, hey, come on board and let's do something cool. So at the time, we didn't have any concrete product idea. Brainstorming、uh, with John. The mobile app Field Trip came about, which is a small mobile app to kind of surface these tiny little bits of historical or informational、uh, text and pictures about where you are. So you'd be、mm. walking along a street and a little card might pop up saying, Hey, this is where this muralist painted. You know, this famous,、uh, I don't know, Banksy art is、uh, in front of you 20, 20 yards ahead. Or this was San Francisco's first railway starting point in the 1800s. Like these k i n d of information would be presented to you. So it was kind of ahead of its time in a way. John paved the way to like、uh, organize so much information from books, art books, histori-、uh, historical books, architectural sources. So we just worked. Kind of in a mode of ingesting a lot of information 
pictures of murals, public art in cities, all of those things, and we're trying to make something out of it. Uh, the product didn't quite uh, take off to the scale that we were hoping for. I think the, the biggest challenge there was how, figuring out the usability of when do you interrupt someone mm. to surface that information. Mm. So we played with a lot of different ideas, but that was kind of the first start of like people being outside and us kind of presenting some you know, virtual information. Um, and then came uh, Ingress. So we brainstormed a lot of ideas around this notion of using uh, gamification, games, to uh, motivate people to walk more. So we kind of designed this territory capture, you know, fairly thick layer of sci-fi, uh, you know, alien, mysterious energy, <laughs> un, you know, unknown source of energy is everywhere. What is this? Is this good or bad? Before you knew it, uh, there was this invisible global world, uh, like kind of a virtual war raging between the green faction, the enlightened team, and the blue faction, the, the resistance. And that's when Masa came on board and uh, he joined us and uh, really kind of brought, I think, the Japanese kind of user base with him. Masa was, you know, kind of quite a social following in many communities. Um, and so, yeah, we really took off in Japan. Can't, still can't quite explain why that is, but yeah, Masa took uh, Yeah, I joined to Google uh, nine years ago and Dennis was the, my first manager. He is the one hired me to Google and we worked together for kind of designing websites, doodle, uh, whatever. And even for the Niantic, uh, he is the one who invited me to the team. And yeah, yeah, since I respect him, just kind of, you know, it was really kind of natural for me to kind of, you know, to work together. It was really good. I was also kind of getting tired of management of the team as well <laughs> after he left. So. <laughs> 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 So yeah, it was fun, and um, yeah. Yeah, so Ingress, um, yeah, largely thanks to Masa, Ingress really kind of took off, and suddenly we had millions of users around the world, like uh, kind of going through not necessarily a virtual reality or a augmented reality experience, but more of an aug kind of a flavor of augmented reality, like um, mm -hmm. it's kind of a alternate reality, maybe. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not necessarily you're <coughs> seeing a, a cam feed of the real world and having stuff overlaid on top. It wasn't that. It was more you're looking at uh, your phone rendering what we call the scanner, mm -hmm. and that was presenting an alternate view of where you were standing, yes. you know, kind of like a maps, but with stuff happening. So we took the the massive amounts of uh, data that we had on public art and murals and all these special locations that uh, our players helped organize and cate categorize. We took those and laid, laid the simple fiction of, well not so simple, but this science fiction notion that oh these public art were created by artists who were influenced by this unknown mysterious energy that scientists have just discovered so it's almost like yeah just kind of being controlled uh, unbeknownst to the artists they, they just couldn't help but create these portals <laughs> and so the scanner would reveal the true nature of the portal basically so so the players would take their phone they'll walk to a real location like the intersection of this park and the street and they'll see on the scanner this like glowing plasma stream looking thing and that's like a ingress portal so you tap on it and you'll see the, the actual photo of the mural the players standing in front of so that was kind of the originating idea behind the Poke Pokemon Go's uh, Pokestops. Mm -hmm. It's a very related idea, but uh, we're kind of <coughs> repurposing it and uh, putting a new twist on it for each title in a way. Yeah, so the alternate reality, the zygote of an idea that led us to trying out uh, a very rudimentary but effective form of augmented reality in Pokemon Go. Sorry, did you have something to add? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, John once mentioned that the inspiration of the exotic matter uh, was came from uh, when he visited Kyoto, Japan. And he went to the uh, really kind of old temple and saw the beautiful garden. And what he felt was he felt something. He felt some power or something 
from the garden, but he couldn't tell what it is. And he named it as an exotic mother. Exotic. <laughs> exotic <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that came from the, you know, the inspiration of, I guess, some kind of, you know, part of creativity of the human being or something that we cannot see is there. So catch copy of the ingress is the world around you is not what it seems. So kind of, you know, the, the, we are kind of trying to make that kind of concept to bring the people out to find hidden gems in the city, whatever kind of creativity that in the history, but people never know or kind of people never notice. You know, the, now people are going to the office and come back to the home just just like that. They are living there for 10 years, but mm -hmm. see nothing else just sometimes. So uh, with playing Ingress of Pokemon Go, they kind of, you know, they go somewhere kind of you know they never been in a city or town and kind of find something really creative and uh that's what we want people to yeah, experience in fact, yeah and in fact when we started we were having a team discussion and and some of us said like as a success metric for our project if we could change just one person's daily commute route um, where they just take a little detour just because of our game, they walk a little extra block. Then we, you know, we were like, yeah, we will pat ourselves on the back and say, you know, job well done, because yeah. we like changed their daily routine, which is harder to do yeah. than you would think. And next thing we know, like we're hearing stories about women in their 60s in Michigan who's lost like 80 pounds off, you know, their weight just because they became a real hardcore Ingress player. Wow. And uh, we, we heard so many stories. And when we added up the number of collective miles that people have walked, it's in the hundreds of millions of miles uh, uh, collectively. And that was just for Ingress. So with po yeah. Pokemon Go, I don't know what the stats would be, the extra walked uh, Yeah, distance. only with Ingress, um, uh, the total amount of distance of walk of the human being was a kind of round trip from Earth to the Sun already. <laughs> and uh, with Pokemon Go, I don't know what's yeah, happening now. Some, mul some multiple of that. Outside of solar system, maybe. <laughs> 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 by walk <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a happy side effect to, yeah. um, to what we're doing yeah. I mean it is an interesting thing like there are games that are successful and it sounds like you know Ingress is like a game that's successful but Pokemon Go, Go kind of became this cultural I mean like you said you're changing people's routines you're changing the way people are th thinking about things and looking at the world around them that's like a cultural change um, did you guys have any idea the level of what what you were kind of tapping into putting Pokemon Go out there, or what was that like? That moment when you you, know, you start to realize how big it was getting and the kind of influence it was going to yes, have. Definitely been overwhelming. I mean, we knew it was going to be much more uh, accessible than Ingress because uh, Ingress was really not quite designed or meant to be something for children or elderly or whatever. I mean, we do have players of all ages, but still we knew it was not the most accessible fiction and the user interface and the game, game mechanics is kind of hard to figure out. So the entire time that we were designing uh, Pokemon Go, that was always on our minds. Uh, everything we did with the user interface, the look and feel, the, the game mechanics, we wanted it to be easy to approach, but then once you get into it, then discover some depth to it. That was kind of our desire there, but, but we had no way to prepare for the kind of reception that it had. Uh, just, just seeing the pictures of like many hundreds of people like out on the streets and the parks that were abandoned suddenly just filled with life and just people like uh, yelling Pokemon to passerbys and just incredible um, uh, yeah we couldn't have hoped for a better launch uh, incredible yeah it's kind of historic in some sense so pretty overwhelmed yeah before it, Dennis you had mentioned that uh, like a, just a numeric goal was like oh if we can get 10 times as many people in Pokemon Go but it ended up being like hundreds of times more. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know the exact multiple, but yeah. it was uh, definitely just blew past our wildest expectations. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Ingress was a pretty successful, pretty big 
app that mm-hmm. you know it went hundred of times more yeah. than that it's just insane yeah and we had some of the best like server engineers because you know, we spun out of Google mm-hmm. like scalable <laughs> systems and stuff like that is you know it's kind of within our expertise yeah. um, which just the response was just so overwhelming that I don't think any company or team could have really predicted what was about to happen yeah so I've wondered about that myself like you know there there are there were a lot of Pokemon fans but like sometimes I wonder if our timing was just um, it was kind of an interesting time in the world when there was a lot of depressing news about terrorism and random acts of violence and like here comes Pokemon Go, where it's kind of nothing but happy, you know, just kind of, mm-hmm. it was kind of set up right. <clears throat> you know, the, the millennials and the people who grew up with Pokemon, it kind of set the, set the stage for us. They were the, the hardcore enthusiasts who kind of brought us to the surface. But then from there, the wider adoption, I mean, we have people who are definitely not Pokemon fans who are picking this up. You know, even in you know of, of, of all ages, like I, I, I know, like grandmothers and people who are who have picked this up, and you know they're using it to just walk and just kind of set micro goals of you know catch five more today or I'll hatch this egg and and then go home, and so they're just getting kind of extra exercise out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so something about the timing of uh, how we launched it. Uh, might, might have been uh, an interesting thing to look back on these phone devices becoming just good enough to yes. pull off kind of a I don't want to say gimmicky but the AR the AR feature that we implemented some can uh, one can argue that it's not true augmented reality because uh, we are not really analyzing what's happening in the, the footage that's piped to the phone so with the next gen hardware like things you hear about the hololens or maybe magic leap who knows what they're doing but and project tango is a good example from google those guys actually can detect where the table surfaces are and where the floor is so if you had pikachu spawn it can actually hop on the table and then jump back on the floor that kind of interaction one could argue depending on how you define ar it can uh, that could be the more accurate definition of ar what we're doing is more just kind of a clever art direction like we shaded the characters and tuned it so that it can kind of look okay in whatever lighting situation we kind of made it very diffuse and just kind of amped up the color enough where it doesn't look uh, like bad CG when Mm -hmm. it's sitting on you yeah Yeah. and so even when the environment is dark it kind of doesn't bother the viewer too much and uh, you know eventually we might get fancy and try to like change the shading depending on the environment lighting but we're not doing anything fancy right now yeah so the the AR that we're doing is basically take the the camera phones uh, the phones camera feed as is and uh, we try to uh, use the gyro the gyroscope in the phone so that the, the, the Pokemon character looks fixed in space <coughs> and uh, so you know there are a lot of hilarious screenshots that uh, yeah. people have captured <laughs> and so it's just effective enough where it gives a taste of what AR is like but once the hardware gets better, it should be a lot more exciting. Masa actually has a HoloLens unit uh, in the office. And it's, yeah, it's pretty cool. You can, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of the, what true AR uh, mm-hmm. can do. And the reason why we are calling the, you know, the Pokemon Go and Ingress as a kind of AR is uh, because uh, we are thinking AR is not only for the visual kind of, uh, AR is more kind of experience that um, like uh, uh, we are kind of trying to define the AR as some kind of computing style of kind of making the experience, enhancing the experience of in a stew, right? Kind of, you know, the in here people are doing something, but try to enhance that experience with using the computing kind of mm-hmm. uh, technology. So Pokemon Go is kind of trying to pass the experience of walking or kind of finding, discovering and Ingress is also kind of trying to kind of make uh, some unusual experience while you're walking. So, augmented reality is something that 
broader kind of definition mm -hmm. it's getting and uh, we are happy to kind of you know to see that people are experiencing some AR experience through the Pokemon Go and you know the, even more uh, in the future while the technology is evolving more so in a few years later it will be kind of you know the pretty natural for the people to watch something through the glass or you know mm -hmm. the listen something you never heard before or kind of you know there's something like and, and enjoying the world more uh, and the world will have more meanings or yeah so. what Vasa just said reminds me of uh, those like old school 8-bit games you know mm -hmm. like so if you kind of go if you go back and remember like playing those were almost like more uh, real to the to, to you than the high def super uh, amped up graphics of the modern games like I think part of it is that uh, when you have kind of the really pixelated retro graphics your imagination has to kick in and kind of fill in the rest mm -hmm. so even if it's like this tiny like mm -hmm. dragon character and you're the guy with the sword and the armor when you're imagining it you're fighting this fire breathing like amazing creature and you're this like badass hero that's gonna save the world so in a sense, our stuff has, uh, Niantic's uh, work has a lot of those elements because yeah. you're outside in the real world, breathing in the elements, like breathing fresh air. So we kind of scratch that archetype of, a, of an idea that almost everybody has experienced where you're the hero of the game that you're playing and the real world is the game stage mm -hmm. and you're in it and you're having to like, you know, win the battle or what, whatever whatever it is cap, you know win the capture the creature uh, so it, it is definitely something um, that's interesting like we're having to force the player to use their imagination and kind of fill in the gaps um, that's missing that's so awesome yeah can I ask a little bit like now that you guys have trained like millions of people like you know, people who haven't engaged with their phone and used this kind of technology before, now through Pokemon, have learned what that means, like what it means to go to a Pokestop and engage with something and kind of walk around the world with that in mind. It's like you've kind of, everyone now kind of understands that. What's kind of the next, and as much as you guys can talk about it, maybe it's uncomfortable, maybe you guys can't, but like what is like, in a, what's, where does that lead? What does that kind of fully immersed, augmented reality experience, walking around with an app, in your, in your mind, what is that? First thing that pops in my head is just how these smartphones are really not the right device for kind of the best AR experience. So, you know, when Google Glass first came out, uh, their kind of intro trailer video footage kind of played up this augmented reality um, experience I idea of it. The concept is really, it, it kind of doesn't interrupt your day-to-day -day kind of flow. You know, you're walking to the subway and it just kind of pops up a helpful information about the route information or is the train here or not, or, or do I need to make a left turn or a right turn, or uh, what time is my next appointment? Like these kind of little tidbits of augmenting uh, your day-to-day -day is kind of where I think Niantic's kind of future project uh, where I would love for it to go like this the pulling out the smartphone and you're worried about battery and you know it's, all these things are clunky and that's you know not the true form of it like some wearable even a watch is a lot better form factor for this stuff like you kind of glance at it and it's like oh got it Charmander is you know, 50 feet away, like that kind of just a much more natural interaction with uh, information is, is kind of the way to go. So, you know, I'm sure in a few years there'll be, you know, some sort of wearable, like either some glass form factor or something that kind of just <coughs> really projects the image onto the real view, the view of the real world. I think that's kind of one obvious area where uh, a lot of stuff will take off. So Niantic is kind of mission is adventures on foot. So we are kind of you know the, the trying to people outside of the house and kind of you know, try to find something outside and uh, you know now yeah like you said uh, people realize that 
my town or the world surrounding us can be a battlefield or kind of you know the adventure scene you know suddenly changes by only one app kind of you know that you realize that that and now yeah we are just kind of you know driving more to kind of you know the for the people to know that going outside and uh, playing with the others uh, under the fresh air and you know that this will make people more kind of healthy and now a lot of people is especially in, in Japan people are worrying about you know the how country can support the you know elders kind of you know the medical kind of expense or something as an insurance or something uh, but uh, kind of you know the, my thoughts is kind of if you know the old people are getting more healthier kind of you know the uh, never get the uh, kind of disease no problem right so, kind of, so I think you know the once you know they, they kind of play Pokemon go go outside talk with the young people and getting more healthy getting more kind of mentally and physically probably you know that it may help you know those type of social problems as well and so we are thinking that you know making people exercise more and you know the finding what they never seen and kind of you know the feeling that the world is better place or the world is very exciting place then kind of you know the world will be getting better mm -hmm. so so hopefully you know that we are keep making and sending the message to the people and try to make the world a better place with the technology of whatever we can do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, early on in Ingress, um, there was this interesting story. This woman posted on one of the forums how she was stranded in the middle of nowhere. Her, her car broke down. And for some reason, I don't remember all the details, uh, described how she tried to call like a tow service, but they wouldn't come, either it was too late or she was just out too far or something. So out of desperation, she um, pulled out uh, Ingress. She happened to be an Ingress player. And so in, in Ingress, there's a very detailed, calm, like a communications channel. It's like a full out chat where uh, people of different factions can uh, either taunt each other or you can just kind of broadcast your own faction. It's, it's a pretty full feature chat. And so she, just to try if it would work, she posted on the Ingress comp channel. It's like, hey, I'm stuck here and here. Is anybody there? Like, can anyone help me? And apparently within like 20 minutes, a guy came out with the truck and like and helped her out, you know, mm -hmm. and, like brought a gallon of gas or whatever. Yeah. So uh, that story really stuck in my head because it's like this interesting convergence of this virtual app, like a little game app that suddenly made a real difference in the physical layer. So it's like this intersection of the virtual and the real. It was uh, a very um, kind of a futuristic sci-fi kind of idea. You know, Ready Player One, these books have uh, covered a lot of um, similar ideas, but are already starting to happen. So I think in Niantic's future, uh, and other companies too, probably um, a lot <coughs> more effort will be tapped to kind of create these human-to-human -human relationships through this virtual layer. I mean, we've already had like ingress uh, marriages and ingress babies, so, uh, so that's kind of dime a dozen now, but uh, I think that'll happen more and more. Yeah, high-level ingress players, 90% of high-level ingress players visit the other city to play ingress, and uh, uh, I think 30% uh, of uh, high-level players visiting even the other country to you know the, to play ingress wow. and um, probably you know the since in the Pokemon Go there is a Pokemon that only appears uh, in Asia or you know there is a Pokemon only appear in you know the Europe. Hotel, uh, yeah Europe so probably you know some of the high level player yeah. you know high level trainers may oh, ask yeah. their parents to yeah I want to go to the Europe mm -hmm. I want to go to yeah. the you know Asia or you know so so that's that's a great thing that you know the, it's gonna kind of bring people to experience something mm -hmm. and kind of you know the once you know the uh, we are kind of thinking to implement the trade function in the future and uh, you know yeah trading then kind of probably oh you went to the Australia you know the capture the Pokemon yeah, bring Australia that, that and bring, bring, bring it back you know? <laughs> it's kind of yeah oh, oh, can we yeah, trade yeah. or kind of you know or you know the, oh I got an Australian friend or kind of I got friends in Japan you know whatever technology can kind of connect people more to and bring people to somewhere else so 
Yeah, so yeah. we intentionally made certain species only spawn in certain continents. Mm-hmm. So that was sort of an, a precursor to trying to make people travel uh, to those countries. And yeah, like Masa said, we'll eventually enable trading in some form. You guys like handpick cut like locations for each species. Like I, I, I'm just curious, how how is it picked? The ones that are exclusive to the continents were, um, I guess one could say hand-selected, although it, it kind of matches the continents, like, kind of broad, I mean, character, I mean, I mean. Yeah, broad characteristics in some way. Um, but the rest of it, we really do make an effort to um, use the real-world map data oh, and uh, try to populated based on the habitat so magic carps tend to be more along water mm-hmm. uh, you know rivers and the other yeah ocean yeah, some beaches yeah or sun pokemon or kind of sun pokemon only appears on the where the sun, the sun is so, so if you don't have a desert in your town then kind of you know you cannot get the sun Pokemon, so you need to kind of you know, <laughs> yeah, you have to travel. Yeah, travel so somewhere. To it's another it, so. yeah. Just we're trying to just encourage that movement. Like like we want people to not just be sedentary or get used to just playing only in their neighborhood, and that creates an interesting dynamic where the ones that are rare around you, all your school friends or whatever, that's not going to be the case for someone out of town mm-hmm. they're going to come come in and say oh my gosh you're sand shrew you have that that's like like one in a million where i live mm-hmm. but to the person living in middle of like las vegas desert or whatever they're they're gonna be like oh yeah there's <coughs> millions of these here so it's it's, <laughs> it's an interesting dynamic yeah. Uh, oh, go ahead. No. This is kind of a geeky que- yeah. question. Me too. But, so go ahead. Uh, <laughs> are there timed Pokemon that only exist for a limited amount of time, or do all of them kind of exist? They can all be caught at all times, kind of thing. Uh, no comment on the time of day thing, uh, but I mean that is. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's conceivable in the future we might even take weather data into consideration um, and other. Yeah, I mean we were trying to reflect as much real world data wow. uh, you know we want to match what's going around you as a player uh, to be in the game I mean the very baby the first baby step we took about that is uh, the time of day change when it when the clock hits 7 p.m. we kind of switch the, the visuals um, to match oh yeah it's nighttime now um, so we could we can take that idea further going forward so maybe you know the usually uh, you know if it's raining outside kids can stay in home usually right but maybe in the future oh it's raining we need to go outside yeah. to get the motor Pokemon now maybe this is a wildly you know factor but I don't know uh, can Pokemon's can fight with each other just like the actual mm-hmm. cartoon uh, no comment. No comment. No comment. That. No comment. That. No comment. That. Yeah. No comment. That. Yeah. Well, we're we're tra- yeah we're we're tra- uh, uh, floating a lot of interesting ideas around uh, gym battles and other forms of yeah player interactions. So yeah, but we think it's important to let's say there's a like a Pokemon Sun Moon will you know the on sale in this November and uh, we are kind of you know they're trying to uh, synergy of you know the both of the world we don't have to overlap too much just kind of you know to make it both of will be kind of you know enjoyable for everybody so um, sorry November what, what, uh, the what Pokemon, Pokemon next Moon. version of the Pokemon Sun ah, Moon yeah. on the 3DS will okay. you know the uh, be yeah. on store <clears throat> so we are kind of trying to both world works and kind of you know but yeah, I mean, because our game takes place in the real world, like any kind of player-to-player interaction yes. becomes like a tricky thing. Sometimes you don't want to actually face person. the person, yeah. you know, even, you know, we haven't um, worked on trading, but it's there's a lot of tricky things to consider there. Uh, in Ingress, we deliberately try to... Uh, be very sensitive to not revealing your actual location. Certain game actions are really the only indirect way 
reveals your position, or, or it's more like this game action happened here, but we never reveal your location, so things like that. We have to take extra precaution when designing the user interface and the game mechanics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that totally makes sense. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the thing that I never seen before was, like, in a park. So, so when, when uh, Pokemon Go launched it, I was in Japan. I was about to take a vacation, but since the, the, the launch of the Pokemon Go Japanese Japan version was delayed, delayed, delayed yeah, because yeah. of the servers and, and, and you know, anything that, you know, the, my vacation was cancelled. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> but anyway, I was in Japan anyway. And uh, I saw, you know, that many people come to the park and play together. And, you know, the people said it's kind of, you know, it's kind of, you know, the unusual, just kind of, you know, the too many people, uh, you know, they're playing in the park. But uh, what I saw was kind of, you know, the couple, kind of, you know, the, you know, the boy and the girl play together uh, under the sun. And also there is, uh, you know, the business person there. And, <laughs> really old guys you know old people just you know to play and giving the advice uh you know, <laughs> to, you know the, the people oh, i found this over there kind of <laughs> and you know the kid, kid play with their parents kind of you know the, uh, and some people says making the you know chance for me to talk to the daughter or talk to the you know the kids more and you know they walk outside together and yeah so i saw a lot of you know the communication that we've never seen before and really a good thing we want to make yeah related yeah. to that we we got a letter from a mom uh, a mother of this uh, 13 year old uh, kid who had autism and she was thanking us because since pokemon go came out i think it was her son her, her son is much more wanting to go outside and and play and before like this kid apparently had like anxiety yeah and uh, like the outside sensory overload would like really uh, be a huge problem but something about Pokemon created structure around that outdoor the outing and so her son was uh, much more like engaged with outside and the cool thing was because this kid was so knowledgeable already about Pokemon the other kids outside who were who are also playing Pokemon, they were much more welcoming yeah. of normally this kind of socially kind of awkward kid. So the mom was like just thrilled that her son was able to get some social practice. Like suddenly they were just kind of intermingling and they were just together and just talking about Pokemon. So uh, it was like a really... And then since then we've actually heard many other stories about how, of, how so there's some connection between autism and uh, the structured way of gameplay in Pokemon Go that's helping, helping a lot of families right now. So another unexpected <laughs> kind of side side. Uh, story or human story around this game. That's so cool. Um, I know we're running out of time, but um, is there other games you guys are developing? Probably no comment, I just <laughs> wanted to ask, because I'm sure a lot of yeah, There's nothing we can reveal at the right. moment. But, but I can imagine Pokemon Go isn't the only thing, or Ingress and Pokemon Go aren't the only things that you guys are working on. Yeah, I'm not sure what I can say. <laughs> sure what I can say about yeah. this. Well, we'll see. Oh, uh, the one last thing is kind of you know the, the when it comes to the design perspective. So Dennis is um, uh, art director and mm -hmm. the, the leading whole of the design team of Niantic. And I would say kind of you know the designers uh, in the team is has a many background like UX or kind of you know the graphic design or whatever. But kind of you know the, the some of them are came from the uh, movie industry, mm -hmm. like kind of you know the computer graphics for the concept design or concept art. Yeah, we have a couple, so, yeah, uh, have a couple of senior concept artists on the team who, yeah. who worked on Star Trek and mm -hmm. Iron Man and movies like that. And one of our member went to the Pixar. Oh, <laughs> but uh, as an intern, but <laughs> um, but uh, I think. I think you know that the, there would be more opportunity for you know the both industry like mm -hmm. kind of you know the, the movie industry. There's a lot of great time and you know that comes to you know go back and forth collaboration, with, uh, yeah, collaboration yeah. with uh, you know the computer industry or whatever. Yeah. So that would be great that you know the like this podcast just yes, you know they're trying to connect those kind of two worlds. Mm -hmm. um, 
together to yeah. uh, you know, make something yeah, cool. That's a good point. I mean, a lot of what we're doing with AR almost to solve problem in the film industry, trying to like match the lighting or the color, color right. you know, the color grading and a lot of those things. Uh, just having a good eye for just all things visual. The, the two industries are quite compatible. So, you know, one might think mobile games is really not for me or vice versa but I've, I've already on my team had huge success with um, ex-film people the visual folks uh, just excelling tremendously um, and developing mobile games like Pokemon Go mm. awesome. I, mean, I have to say one of the things that I really love about what you guys have talked about with your company and the vision of the company and Pokemon Go and, and uh, what you guys are doing is that Underlying everything is actually something that's really important to all of you. Like your success that you guys have talked about, for all of the kind of press and financial success and kind of success as a company and growth and stuff, I feel like you guys always return back to well, the reason why we did this was actually to encourage people to come outside. And I love that, like, there are a lot of people who are trying to make that kind of change, but their approach can also be well, I'm just going to create public service announcements and go directly to people and tell them to go outside. And, and that's very effective, but I love that like through entertainment, through kind of engaging on a different level, you've actually achieved on, you know, on such a high level this goal of like getting people just to just go outside, which seems like not that hard, but it's so hard to get, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's so hard. to get someone to walk out their front door is an extremely difficult thing. And I really am so excited to hear that not only that was the driving force, but also that that kind of thought is going to go into future projects um, is kind of like, you know, that makes me wish for nothing but huge success for you guys because yeah. I think it's better for everyone. Yeah, you know, thanks um, very much. Yeah, it helps really to, cool. yeah, it helps to focus on a singular idea and yeah. stick to the principle. Yeah. That definitely is a good formula to have, I think. Yeah. And one thing I want to add was before we launched Pokemon Go, no people knows about Niantic. <laughs> just kind of, yeah. We were so small, just kind of, you know, the spun out from Google. I want to say kind of people surprised to hear that, you know, there are only kind of 50 people, 60 people just, you know, they work to make this. So I want to say kind of, you know, the, it's not the matter of the size, but kind of, you know, the, anything is possible. Anything is possible. <laughs> yeah. We have a strong vision. Yeah, that's what's amazing about the vision. Thanks, you guys. Great. Thank you yeah. so much oh. for talking with us. Yeah, so inspiring. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for having us.